In this video, we're going to show you how to create optimal container images for Node.js using a technique called multi-stage builds. In particular, we're going to take a standard Docker image, which is around 945 megabytes. And I say around, it is 945 megabytes. But we're going to take that image and we're going to reduce it down to something much, much smaller. Anyone who's ever used the official Node.js image will know that it's a super bloody image. And the major reason for that is that that image has got a whole load of packages and tools that are installed that are that you may need for building your application, but you wouldn't need to run your production application. And those tools include things like curl and wget and git and mercurial subversion uh, and then it's got a whole set of tools also to download and build a node.js uh, application runtime as well and then finally it's even got things like application installation packages such as yarn and npm so all of these things combined uh, combined to the bloat so we can use a technique called multi-stage build to build using something like the official node.js image or another image which has all the tools that you might need to build your application, but then deploy onto a smaller image which doesn't contain all of those packages and tools and just has exactly what you need to run your application runtime. And that's what we're gonna do today. One of the things we'll also do in this video is take a look at distro list builds as well. We're not gonna do a full deep dive into this, but what we will at least do is build our application using a multi-stage build and deploy onto a distro list build and see what the impact of the application would be in that particular circumstance. What we're gonna do now is build a very simple Hello World application in Node.js, and then we will use that application in our multi-stage build, and we can see the difference from building in one image and then deploying to another. So if we take a look at my screen just now, here is our Hello World application. All it's gonna do is when we hit port 3003 on localhost, it's gonna return Hello World. It is as simple as that. And then if we bring up my terminal, what we'll do is just run that locally to just make sure it works. So I'm gonna type in node source server.js. My server is now running. And then on my other screen, I am just gonna curl localhost 3003 and you see it returns hello world. What we're gonna do now is very quickly take that same application and then we're gonna build it in Docker. For just now, we're not gonna do a multi-stage build, we're just gonna build it in Docker the normal way. If we take a look at my Docker file for a second, you can see I'm using the official Node.js image and I'm using the long-term support version, which is version 14.15.4 as it stands today. You can see I am building a production image. So I've set my Node.m variable to production. If you want to deep dive on that, I have another video and that can go into the reasons why you should always set that environment variable to production. I've set my working directory to app. So what we're going to do is copy across our package JSON and our package lock JSON so that we can build all our dependencies. And then I'm going to build all our node modules using npm CI dash dash production. So it's a production build and I'm using the npm CI. Notice I'm not using npm install. I'm using npm CI, which is what you want to use for uh, production CI CD build pipelines. If you want to deep dive into why I'm using npm CI, I have another video on why you should use npm CI over npm install for your production CI C D build. And then finally, I'm setting the user as node, so we don't need to run that as root. And then eventually, what I'm going to do is copy the source across from my application, and then I'm going to start my server. So that is our Docker file. So what I'm going to do now is quickly build our image locally and see what the, the size of that is going to be. So I'm just going to hit Docker build, and I'm going to tag it as uh, hello node 1415.4 dash working. So I've now built my application. Uh, if I just clear my screen and type in Docker images, and we will see that the size of my Hello Node application is 945 megabytes. And if we were to actually look at the base image uh, underneath that, you can see that it's using uh, the official Node.js image, which is uh, Node 1415.4, and you can see that's 942 megabytes. So, you know, th for the, the really keen mathematicians amongst us, you can see there's a sort of three megabyte difference uh, between our images. As you can see, a 945 megabyte image is a little too big for a production image, and it's got all of those tools that we don't that we don't really want and all of these security vulnerabilities. So what we're going to do is is use a multi-stage build so that we can take the application that we built and effectively copy it onto a much slimmer image, which will be more appropriate for production. If we think about what our Docker file is doing just now, it is both responsible for the building and the running of the application. And what we're gonna do is separate that into two. So the builder image is gonna be responsible for 
building the application now and the production image is going to be responsible for the running. So we don't want any of the elements that are involved on building the image to be in our pro production image, but we want them to be in the builder image only. So let's take a look at that image. So in order to make that builder image, what I need to do is just append as builder uh, to after the from node 1415.4. And what that is meaning that I've given that stage a name, which is builder, and therefore I can refer to that from any other future stages that I'm creating. So you can look at the next line, which is node env equals production. I still need to set node env equals production because I, I need to build my NPM modules and I don't wanna have any dev dependencies in that build. I still need to set my worker directory as app and I obviously still need to uh, copy my package JSON and my package JSON because I'm gonna be doing that NPM CI dash dash production to build all my node modules. I will obviously still need to copy the application across as well, but I won't need to start my node server JS because I'm not gonna be running the application in my builder image. So now that I've got that, that builder image created, I now need to create my uh, running image. So for just now, I'm gonna use the node 14.15.4 slim image, which is a much smaller image than the, uh, the, the 14.15.4 image because it doesn't contain any of those uh, packages such as image magic or mercurial or git etc that you might need for building your application it just contains a, a very sm a much smaller set of tools uh, which is going to be appropriate for running node.js and because i built my application and all my node modules in my builder image all i really need to do is copy across the forward slash app directory into my new image. And I'm gonna do that by doing copy dash dash from equals builder, which means copy from my builder stage. And then uh, I want the folder forward slash app, and then I'm gonna copy it into this image having the forward slash app. And then I'm gonna set my work directory to being uh, forward slash app. I, I obviously don't want um, my container to be running as root, so I'm setting my user as node, uh, and node is a user that is set up in that 1415.4 slim image, and then I'm gonna start my server. So now that I've got my new uh, Docker file, what I'm gonna do is do a quick build. So if I just run build very quickly, it'll take a couple of seconds to build that, and then if I look at my Docker images, you will see that my new hello node application is now 168 megabytes. So it's it's a good sort of eight, and that's uncompressed. So it's a good 800 megabytes smaller than uh, the the main image. So that that's pretty cool. And if I was to push that up into Quay for a second, we can see what that's going to look like compressed. So I will just open up Quay. And if we look at the image there, it is a in a compressed version on my container registry, it's a 58.1 megabyte image. So it's a much smaller image, much more workable. So one of the things I've seen many, many people do is to build from the, uh, the official Node.js image and then copy into the Alpine image. I have a whole video on why you shouldn't do that. Um, and, and, and feel free to check that out. So one of the rules I have is always use the same operating system and use the same build tools in your builder stage as you use in your production running game. Don't mix and match. So what I mean by that is if you're using a, a Debian base uh, as your builder, then use a Debian base for your pr running production. If you're using a Red Hat Universal Base Image base for your uh, builder, then use Red Hat Universal Base Image for your production run. Don't mix and match, match images. I've seen a lot of people build on something like the official Node.js and then run on Alpine. They are two completely different uh, distros, they're two completely different build tools. So whatever you do, don't mix and match, right? Always keep your base distros or base OS is the same and your same build tools. And that way you're not gonna run into trouble from when you're creating builds to when you're deploying because you're gonna be using the same tools. I would also say that also use the same images for your test environments as you use in your production environments because you don't want to be testing against Red Hat Universal Base Image and then deploy on Debian and then it works completely differently. So always keep your test environments and production environments running the same base operating systems and same base tools. And, and as I said, don't mix and match images for your builder 
stages and your production running stages. So one of the things that's getting a lot of attention at the moment is a lot of people are starting to use what is considered as a distro list build to run their uh, Node.js applications on. And, and Google's got a distro list Node.js and actually it's pretty cool stuff. Um, but it isn't really distro list. What, what you're actually meaning by distro list is it's really a stripped down version. So the OS has been stripped of a bunch of packages that you don't need. And it's got rid of things like shells, etc. you know, such as bash from the image, um, because you don't need that to run in production in order to bring down the size and reduce the security footprint. So it's pretty cool. Um, and what we're going to do here is, is actually uh, use the multi-stage build to deploy uh, to a distro list build. Now, the, the reason that we're not breaking my don't mix and match rules here is the Google distro list build is actually uh, Debian underneath that. So it's it's not breaking my rules and so I can do that. So how I do that is if rather than doing my from node 1415.4 dash slim, I'm gonna just change that to uh, gcr.io distro list node.js and I'm gonna pick version 14 from that. Everything else remains the same. I'm gonna do from builder at that, work directory is the same, user node is gonna be the same. So what we're gonna do is do another Docker build and then we'll see what the impact on the size is. So I've run that, and then if we have a look at my images, and <laughs> if we look at the size of the image, you can see that that image now is essentially 120 meg. So the, and, and for the astute amongst us, the original image was 118 meg, and then I add my application on there and it sort of worked out is 120 meg. So if I now do a Docker push, we uh, that's on un, that's uncompressed obviously. So if I do a Docker push and we'll see what the size of that image is gonna look like in Quay. Now that I pushed my image to Quay, let's take a look at the difference between the two images. So the, the previous version that I had uh, using the node 14.15.4 uh, slim image was around 58.1 meg compressed. And then if I just do a quick refresh on Quay, you will see that the size of the image running on my uh, on my machine is now 41.6 megabytes. So I've saved myself an extra 17 meg uh, compressed. So I haven't done anything different. I'm just running a smaller image and I've sort of built from my official Node.js and then I've I've deployed onto my distro list build and I've I brought down my overall image size from 945 megabytes uncompressed to around 120 megabytes. And then if I think about the uh, from an unc uh, from a compressed version, I've brought it down from 346 megabytes uh, compressed right down to 41.6 meg compressed. So just by using a multi-stage build and using better base images, et cetera, uh, and, and especially in the, in the case of using something like DistroList, I've massive, massively reduced uh, the size of my image. Now, there is some downsides um, from a kind of security perspective. If I look at something like the, the Claire scanner, if we look at the security scan that's performed in my hello node, then it's coming back with an unsupported. So I, it's leaving me a little bit blind um, for what vulnerabilities exist in that image or not because it's an unsupported from the Claire scanner. Um, so that's a sort of downside, but you know, that's, that's the way it is. And for anyone that's interested, that image at 41.6 megabytes is actually comparable to the Alpine image size. So the Alpine image is 40.5 megabytes, whereas uh, the uh, Disrealist build is 41.6 megabytes. So, uh, and again, it's based on Debian. So it, for me, I, again, like the other previous video that I had, the, the Disrealist image is, is obviously a better image to use than, than using Alpine. As I said before, I prefer using the Red Hat Universal base image just because it's a very secure image and it's very, very small. It's a little bit bigger than Alpine. It's a little bit bigger than uh, than Google DistroList. It's a little bit bigger than uh, Debian Stretch Slim, but it's a, it's a secure image. It's well patched and maintained and I don't really need to think about things. So I, I tend to use that as my, my base image. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is just change this multi-stage build so that I'm using the Red Hat Universal base image uh, rather than uh, Debian. So in this case, I'm going to change my from from my builder image so that it's registry access red hat.com forward slash UBI Node.js 14. So that's this official Node.js 14 Red Hat supported image. Um, 
And then the other thing that I'm going to change is so I just need to, before I do my npm ci dash dash production, I need to set my user as zero. So I need to set it to the root user um, just because otherwise it won't be able to install my node modules because it won't have permissions. And then in the... Uh, in my production running image, what I'm going to do is uh, I've sort of pre-built a UBI minimal version. So what I've got is running UBI minimal and then I've installed Node.js over the top of it. I pre-built that. I will do another video on how to create your own optimal Node.js uh, UBI Red Hat universal base image images. Um, but just to know I'm using that as sort of my base. And then uh, I'm just going to do a copy of the built application into my production image as I was doing before. So again, I'm meeting my rules, which is my builder image and my uh, running image should always use the same base operating system and base tools. So I should never mix and match. So I'm gonna do a Docker build. So just run that Docker build, it's running. And if I just uh, look at my Docker images for a second, you will see that the size of that image is 182 meg. So as I said, it's a little bit bigger than than the uh, the Google Distro List version, but it's it's a pretty respectable size. And if I just push that up to Quay for a second, um, and then we can compare what the compressed version uh, looks like versus uh, the Distro List. So if I just do a refresh, as I said, the the previous version was 41.6 megabytes, and you can see that the version that I'm running is 65.5 megabytes. So it's about 20 meg bigger. Um, it's comparable to the Stretch Slim uh, version. So it's only like a, a meg over. Um, so it's it's not that big, but it's about 20 meg bigger than the uh, Google Dish release and about 20 meg bigger than the Alpine image. And, and for me, that's a sort of an acceptable thing. So hopefully you found this video useful. Um, I've shown you how to do a multi-stage build. I've shown you my basic rules, which is don't mix and match your build or base operating system from your production running uh, operating system. Also don't mix and match the images that you're using in your test environments from your production environments. And hopefully I've also shown you the, uh, you know, what the advantages of something like a distro list images and also some of the advantages of using different images such as Red Hat universal base images. So I think you can use multi-stage images to <laughs> seriously reduce the size of your overall image and also reduce the uh, the security footprint on that as well and give yourself a, a really compact and, and great working image, whether you're using uh, Debian Stretch Slim, whether you're using something like Debian Buster Slim, whether you're using uh, uh, Google Distro List, or whether you're using Red Hat Universal Base Image Minimal as your production image. They're all great options and, and they're really going to give you an optimized image. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful and speak soon.